I've been compared to Jason Statham the last few days. Take quite, that. <laughs> I'm, quite enjoy, I'm quite enjoying it. Yeah, I'd enjoy that 100%. I wouldn't worry. We're not up to a thousand subscribers. <laughs> At the first show I did on like a stream, I put like a black background on, on behind me, put a black t-shirt on, it just looked like I had like a floating head. I was like, oh, you look like an absolute gnome. I was just doing it live thinking you just look like an absolute idiot right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Blowpar podcast. I'm Joe and also we have another co-host, Joe. Hi, I'm Joe. Hello. And today we're excited to announce Alex Elliott Golf is uh, joining us on the channel. Thanks for having me guys. Appreciate it. Oh, are you okay? I guess as well as you can be at the moment, yeah. I mean, keeping myself busy doing bits and bobs here and there, a bit like us all are really. But yeah, as well as can be expected. Thanks. Good, good. Right, so we thought we'd begin this with the Alex Elliott quick fire round. So question number one, what would you be if you weren't a professional golfer? Um, quick fire, this is going to be, will not it? Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what? I'd, journalist, I reckon. I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah. Next question. Favourite club in the golf bag? We know probably what brand it's going to be, but... <laughs> to be honest, uh, putter, to be honest. Yeah, nice. Yeah, putter. What, what, have you what got? putter have you got at the minute? Um, I actually uh, robbed it off my one of my friends, Tom Murray. It's an uh, XO two ball gold one, but it's got like, he got it uh, when he, cause he played on tour, like a tour insert. So it's just an absolute gem with a black shaft. So probably dobbed him in there, telling him that I've robbed it off him. You probably get in yeah. trouble, but yeah, it's an absolute gem. I wouldn't worry. We're not up to a thousand subscribers. <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> so um, what would your dream four ball be? Can it be celebrity? Anybody? Or the golfers? Whoever. Whoever. Tiger's got to be in there, 100%. Bill Murray. I always think he's an absolute legend at, um, every, every year when you see him play at Pebble Beach and, and up in Scotland at the Dunhill. Um, so, a final one. It'd have, it'd have to be Ricky, wouldn't it, for Cobra Puma? Cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Keep him happy. Very good. Best golf course you've ever played? Favourite golf course, uh, I've not actually played that many other top 100 in the world, so it'd have to be, and I've not actually played it fully, did some filming on it, Turnbury, Trump Turnbury. Um, no, that place is just a joke. Like The whole setup, the first tee when you arrive, the golf area, the hotel, it's just like stepping into paradise. And I got it, we were in there in February, and it was like crystal clear, blue, blue skies, cold, but like you know, like just the perfect day for golf. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, it'd have to be Turnbury. And I think it's the Elsa. That's the one that has like the uh, par three over the ravine near the lighthouse. So yeah, turn brief for me. Awesome. Nice. I was going to say, it's one of those courses you wouldn't want to go to if it was really cold and windy and wet. No, no, no chance. No, no chance. Even, like, I can imagine it being bleak. Yeah. But even then, I don't think you'd really mind too much because it is pretty special mind, isn't it? Yeah, because honestly, like, it's, like you say, if it, it could be terrible because you turn up on that day, you literally pick your golf clubs up take them to the locker room, your shoes are cleaned, everything's like sorted. So I think even like you say, rainy day, you're still going to have like an unbelievable experience. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so what would be um, a dream course that you haven't yet played? Where would you really like to play? I'm not going to go cliche and go Augusta. I'm going to go uh, Bay Hill. That is where I'd want to play. Cool. Bay Hill. Because cool. every, every year I see that on TV and I just think, just that whole like, uh, coastline with golf courses that area just looks unbelievable so Bay Hill cool nice so obviously everybody knows you from the golfing world etc etc what's what's your favorite thing to do outside of golf pre-lockdown or lockdown <laughs> <laughs> uh, give it give us two answers I, I, uh, so lockdown cycling I bought a bike and um, like everybody I think did just as it got into lockdown and I'm absolutely hooked I'm doing, well, it doesn't sound like a lot if you're a professional cyclist, but I'm doing a fair bit each day, like 25 to 30K each day on the bike and absolutely loving it. So cycling um, and outside of that, going for a coffee. Sunday morning, nice sunny day, sitting, just having a coffee, letting the world go by on my two favourite, I guess, in the club hobbies. Cool. Yeah, nice. Do you play an instrument? No chance. I'm terrible. I'd be absolutely <laughs> I, I tried. I tried the guitar at like high school, at high school, primary school, and I'm like tone deaf. I think I can sing. My girlfriend tells me I'm absolutely terrible. So no. <laughs> Fair enough. 
So you can make it golfy. You don't have to make it golfy. What's your favorite holiday destination? Holiday destination? South Africa. Nice. That's one yeah, place I need to get out. to. I really need to go. Yeah, for both. Like, I went there when I was caddying. And I know we're going to touch on this later in a, maybe another episode or something. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just unbelievable. The place, the people. I mean, I think it's a bad rep, but the people are, like, horrible and it's quite unsafe. Of course, anywhere is unsafe, depending on where you go. Like, I could step into Manchester and it'd be unsafe. But mm-hmm. it is just unbelievable. The golf, the courses, the food, the wildlife. So, yeah, that'd be my favourite place in the world. Nice. Did you go to Lost City Golf Resort? I didn't do that one, no. I did Leopard Creek, um, the Northern Island Johannesburg, did East London. Um, that's the only one I didn't do. And that's meant to I was be gonna say, unbelievable. Got to go and do it. We, we stayed in the hotel there and it's a joke. They've got like an in, inland beach with a, like a wave machine. And like when you're crossing over the bridge, there's all these elephants and stuff. And like the bridge, it's just mental, absolutely mental. And the golf's unreal as well. It's so cheap. Is that where they have, um, where they play that? Gary play, play, yeah, play Gary Play. Is That's that where it, they play? Yeah, there, yeah. yeah so yeah. they've got the two courses there. Um, so they've got that course, which kind of sits on the end of the resort. And then they've got another course. Uh, and the other wow. course is equally amazing. You kind of like, as you walk through, you go through like this weird kind of cobblestone archway. You look out and there's basically like, two island greens and then just a big like pond and like yeah absolutely amazing you see the ninth and the 18th running up and you're just there like this is unbelievable yeah and, and it's weird everything's like a dark green it's like yes no it's, it's gonna sound like such a stupid comment like obviously grass is green um, <laughs> but like it just i don't know what it's about it just looks so rich everything just looks so good yeah. so what's the most under par you've ever been in a round of golf um Six under par, uh, cool. and that was as a as an am just before I turned pro. I played, uh, in, I think, I think it's like a mid amateur round, and one of the things about round in Cheshire. Um, so yeah, six under par was my is my lowest round, and as a pro, three under par I think. So I've just slowly got worse as a turn pro. It's so not a great, it's not a great, <laughs> what a great thing that is it. <laughs> that's, that's still not bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty typical story, I, I guess for yeah, I guess pros like us, um, literally. Not not tournament pros teaching whatever, whatever you branch off into. It, it's quite it's actually within certainly within the PGA. You've really really got to work hard to maintain your level as, as soon as you start doing that because you're busy busy helping other golfers rather than helping yourself. Yeah, and I also think I'm going to be probably bold saying this, but like the way you do your course and you you guys know as well. Like I don't think it helps you play golf. I don't think there's that. I mean, no. you've got to play seven events, but then. You've got to play seven events. You've got to then feel competitive in those seven events, but then you've got to do 30 to 35 hours in the shop. Oh, and then if you want to teach as well, that's, it. that's a whole, yeah. that's a whole kind of worms I could open there, but no, I'm not. <laughs> I totally <laughs> agree, guys. Yeah. When did you start playing golf? <laughs> Started playing golf when I was four years old, like picked up a golf oh, club, but, yeah. but like, pro- but then like from that age, I was doing everything like cricket, football literally anything I could put my hand at but when I probably started taking it seriously between like 11 and 13 when I stopped playing football and then was like no I want to try and pursue this with the dream of playing on the European tour and and doing everything like a young Rory McIlroy has gone on to uh, achieve that's it was child prodigy started at four he was shipping to washing machines ended up earning millions on tour and uh, a bit of a different opposite career path (laughs) (laughs) hey you've not you've not done too badly um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, go on, so go. who's the best player that you've ever played with best player that i played with um that i've actually played golf with or like could be yeah. caddying with okay who, who um, you played with? uh paul waring now funny story about this um a year before he won the seniors open i was playing a 1836 event which is like a mini tour event uh in the northwest at mottram hall and it was chucking it down like all had our rain gear on winner two ball I turned up on the first tee and I thought, I'm, I'm going to be horrible here. Who's this old boy? Who am I playing with? Like, <laughs> this old boy then went and shot like three or four under par. And I was just, afterwards, I was like, I sort of recognise him. Who's this? So anyway, I searched him afterwards. I said to Dad, Paul, where is he? He's like, oh yeah, he's won multiple times on tour. And then, lo and behold, I think between three and four months later, he's there, won the seniors British Open. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's this old boy? So uh, yeah, he, he was super impressive. Just purely for the fact that I went round the whole event um, and I was like, oh, I've not really done anything special. Got to the end and I was like, oh my God, you sound like 200 par. It's blown a gale. It's windy. It's horrible. 
and then obviously gone on to win um, the British Open, senior British Open. So yeah, I think mean, that's a cool one. That's well, yeah, cool. that's a very good story. So thinking about your golf game still, what's the what's your biggest strength within that golf game? I'd say my irons. Um, I, I fancy myself as a pretty good iron player. Not like I guess your typical modern iron player. Like uh, I can shake the ball pretty well both ways, up down. I know that's what I kind of prize myself on. So if it's windy, um, I, I find I'm pretty good in the wind, and that's probably blowing uh, smoke up myself. But that's my strength in my game. Right. Perfect. You've got to be honest, don't you? That's the thing. You know, you've got to be good player. Like you know, all pros should have a strength where they can go. This is where I was good, or this is where I am good. Yeah, you so know what? As golfers, though, as golfers, we find it. I think I, I do as well. Like we find it hard to compliment bits out of game. I could sit here and slate my game to the hill so yeah. easily, but <laughs> ask me to say a compliment, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then you feel like, oh, should be saying too much good stuff about yourself. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so with, wouldn't you say it's Western culture in general? Like, let's say, for example, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, I earn loads of money. If I said that now, you'd look at me and be like, what? It was just, this boy. Just, just, you just would, though, wouldn't out, you? Way, Mr. Taxman, I don't earn lots of money, all right? <laughs> I'm start trying to chase me down. Um, but you kind of get my point, and it's like with golf, like, you know, I, I get it a lot with players who I'm kind of working with, but they come in the clubhouse afterwards, and they're like, oh, I did this wrong, I did this wrong. I missed a putt here and I, I missed, I duffed this chip. Like, hang on a minute, but you hold out on 10 from 170 yards and you've done this, you've done that, that would do really well. And nobody seems to be able to talk positively. But the Americans, no. like if you oh, go to America, they're all like, oh, I'm so good at golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, he, and even if they're terrible, like they could be yeah. absolutely <laughs> terrible, but like, I don't know. It's, I think it's just like saying it's Western culture in, in general. Yeah, I think it is. So, on your channel, who's 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 your favourite ever collaboration? Favorite guests, ever. group of guests. Um, it'd have to be James Robinson and Seb on golf. That was really fun. Like we got invited to go to Mauritius with American Golf, and we took us out there for a week, um, and we did loads of videos collaborating. Just that whole trip, being with those guys, meeting them for the first time. Like, I spoke to them online. Um, and then met them first time in person was pretty cool. I just, just I guess bouncing off each other, not only on the videos, but the advice to help grow channel and do other things, social media. So those two, Seb on golf um, and James Robertson, the, my favourite two that I've collaborated with. Brilliant. Mauritius, cool. a trip. Yeah, it was, oh, it was a joke. When I got an email through, I was like, nah, just a wind up this. <laughs> Can't be true. And then actually it, it happened. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Alex, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, we've really no enjoyed it. Really good insight. Hopefully you uh, have enjoyed it too at home, guys. Remember to help us out, press that subscribe button, hit the like, and go and check out Alex's content because it is absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. <laughs>